Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Cooper. As a gastroenterologist, I regularly perform dilations of the esophagus to help patients with trouble swallowing. Recently, a patient asked me about self-dilation. Watch this video to learn about various dilation techniques, including self-dilation, to understand the recommendations your GI team makes. Certainly some patients have wondered if they could dilate themselves, and I think they and many doctors would be shocked to learn that yes, that is a possible technique. It's actually been researched for over 50 years, and within the last 20 years, there's been a growing movement of doing this. It's a really cool technique because it empowers patients to self-manage their care, and I'm really excited that places like the Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic are offering this. Dysphagia or difficulty swallowing can be caused for a multitude of reasons, common ones like GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, also eosinophilic esophagitis, infectious causes from fungal to viral, and we're always concerned about the possibility of an esophageal cancer causing a blockage. And that's why it's a very important first step to be evaluated by your GI team and to get an endoscopy. You can't just simply do a dilation. We need to look and see what the problem is and understand it and then proceed with the dilation. When I encounter a patient with a tight stricture, I have various strategies to help open it. There's various silicone tubes that can be inserted down the esophagus to provide a stretch and open up the esophagus. The size is selected based on how tight the stricture appears to be. When it looks really tight, I can use a specialized scope that's smaller to pass through. And we can also use a balloon that gives a graded response to stepwise open it up under direct visualization. That's a very helpful technique for these very tight strictures. At times, if there's a deep break that is at risk of scarring up, then I'll inject that with medications that help to reduce the risk of that scar reforming. If a patient has required many dilations and still has difficulty swallowing, they may benefit from self-dilation. In the past, our best option was to place a stent that expanded over time and helped to support the stretch. But that doesn't always work that well. And so I think it's really exciting for patients to have the opportunity to take control of this process. Now, patients have to be carefully selected. First of all, they have to have a benign cause of their stricture. And what that means is they should not have cancer because obviously that needs to be treated for their cancer. If they have a benign cause, they also need to have one that is resistant to therapy. And that's generally defined as a person that has had five attempts at stretching up to 14 millimeters, or they got there but they only have the benefit last for about a month before they're again having trouble swallowing food. 14 millimeters is a key marker because usually if we're chewing effectively, we can get our food smashed down to about 13 millimeters and then it should pass easily through that esophagus that's stretched to 14. And so if we can't get there, we need the patients actually participating in this process. And that's where places like the Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic enter into the picture. Patients go into these specialized clinics and they work with the physician team and specialized nurses that train them in this technique. Now, the first step is they have to just get comfortable with the sense of self-dilating. And there's really two big things. One, you have to be able to suppress your gag reflex. Usually we're doing this procedure under anesthesia, and so your gag reflex isn't much of a problem. So a patient has to get comfortable with that odd sensation. And the next thing they have to grow comfortable with is pushing a long silicone tube down their esophagus having a sense of how much resistance they should feel and getting comfortable with giving it a slight push enough to stretch and get results. Patients are always starting with an endoscopy performed by the gastroenterologist and they're stretching the esophagus enough to get the patient to a point where they can now start to get comfortable with an eight millimeter bougie, which is the name for the silicone tube. They then work at eight millimeters, nine millimeters, 10 millimeters, mastering the techniques. And then they're ready to actually really get the esophagus stretched, working stepwise, millimeter by millimeter, week by week, towards that goal of 14 millimeters. Once they get there, they're often able to decrease the frequency that they have to perform the dilation, from working on this daily to maintaining it with only weekly dilations. Endoscopies can always be performed along the way. If a patient grows uncomfortable and they have the sense that they're having to push too hard, then we may need to go back down with a balloon to get a bigger stretch at a key little written or stricture that has to be opened up. What's really cool about the research on this technique is that it's not only been performed in adults, but also in children and in all sorts of disease processes, not only the common GERD, but also eosinophilic esophagitis, and even patients who had esophageal cancer who now have scar from surgical removal or from radiation injury. 
And that's just great to be able to see these patients not only be cured of their cancer, but also cleanse of some of the consequences of the therapy. I hope you found this information about dilation and self-dilation techniques helpful. Please watch the videos linked below where we cover more information about endoscopy and causes of trouble swallowing. Thank you and be safe.